I also wanted to uh, play, this is from More Perfect Union. I wanted to play this, uh, it's a pretty long video. I don't know if we'll play the whole thing. This is from More Perfect Union explaining what our inflation problems actually are. And hint, they're not from, they're not from actual working people making more money, which is what certain anchors on MSNBC want you to believe. If you could play that, Colin. Do you feel like the prices of normal things you buy every day are going up? Well, supposedly we can thank rising inflation. The main thing is inflation. The American people are facing the highest inflation in more than 10 years. Chicken, eggs, meat. A pound of steak is up by two bucks. A pound of bacon costs over $7. $7 bacon. $7 bacon. So what happened? Here's a clip from one of the people who has control over prices. John Katsimatidis, president of Gristidis and D'Agostino Supermarkets. He's also a real estate and oil CEO. You know how CEOs are on Wall Street. Uh, they go, they live quarter by quarter. Uh, if they're off by a penny in earnings, Wall Street is not forgiven. So what are the CEOs doing? They're raising prices. I see food prices going up. Promotions are down to zero. Why give away something when you don't have to give it away and you make more margin? That's a confession. Why give away something when you don't have to give it away and you make more margin? Business leaders are admitting that corporations are using the narrative of hyperinflation as an excuse to raise prices on you and increase profits for themselves. This is a clip from the 2021 third quarter earnings of Tyson, the meat processor whose chicken you might have in your freezer. We have increased prices to help offset significant raw material and supply chain cost inflation. Pricings improved nearly 16% in the quarter versus the comparable period last year. Some quick business talk translation. When he says pricing improved, he means Tyson was happy to raise prices. And that was good news for Tyson shareholders. Tyson's wants people like you and me to believe that they were forced to raise prices as a result of inflation. But the company is making almost double what it made the year before. Inflation gave them the excuse they needed to raise prices and reap record profits. So I wanted to play that more perfect union video. They do good work because uh, they were basically explaining that a lot of these corporate CEOs, a lot of these corporate Goliaths, uh, they're just price gouging. It's not because they have to raise prices, raise prices because things are so much more expensive for them on the wholesale side or on, you know, the actual cost side. Uh, mm -hmm. They're just price gouging and using inflation as an excuse. And the C folks at CNBC and the corporate media are happy to push that narrative that they don't have a choice but to raise prices. Yep. That's the standard fare. That's exactly what keeps happening. And we, we I don't know what the obsession is with everything about inflation being about printing money, but that seems to be the perverse, like almost like just obsession with people to think that somehow or another, it, it, it's, it, it literally is monopoly powers over products. It is literally supply chains breaking down. It's literally, we had to pull Lazarus with the freaking uh, economy. We put it on ice. We put it in a coma and then we're trying to bring it back out. And that takes some effort, man. I mean, it wasn't just the U.S. economy. It was the global economy, you know, and, and you think about what globalism has done. It put peace parts in all these different countries. And we had blockades or people, you know, we can't send X from this country in because they're contaminated or this group is blocked. I think there's like 37 different countries that the iPhone is made in to make one iPhone. There's 37 countries for different parts. That's a tremendous amount of logistics that have to be well oiled and working, you know, very, very smoothly. Otherwise, you're going to have those major disruptions. And we saw that big time in the semiconductor uh, arena. So but what I what I find amazing and you saw this in Biden's press conference earlier was this continued push. I've met with Walmart and I've met with so and I've met with this corporation and that corporation, and this and that. It's this continued feti fetish fetishizing of private industry yes. the same private the pr same private industry that literally is why this pandemic has gone the way it's gone let's face it trump he besides being a, a sociopath uh trump would not shut down the economy when he should have i don't care if it triggers people the economy everything should have been shut down for a month right in the beginning uh that's what china did that's what some other places did and it 
dramatically made the pandemic better for them. Uh, we needed rampant social distance. He didn't shut it down because the donors, many of whom run these companies, said, no, 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 no. Capitalism never dies. I don't care how many people die. OK, so and we've basically uh, you, whether it be in farm, big pharma or elsewhere, all of these corporations, a lot of them have hit record profits, profits during these pandemic. And now they're price gouging uh, under the guise of inflation. But Biden saying, well, I'm <laughs> I'm meeting with these corporations to try and, you know, help 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 you at the at the dinner table. It's well, just the well, friction, what's he going to do? The friction is the friction between those two things is is pretty rich, Steve. Yeah, I, I, I just I can imagine him saying, "What can we do to help you, Walmart, to to bring the prices down? You know, what can we do to help you with your supply chains?" And all all Walmart would say is, "Deregulate some more. How about deregulate some more? How about you know eliminate this tax and deregulate some more?" That's all it is. I mean, I heard that, and if look, if you haven't read the book The Divide by Jason Hickel. Please go out and read the book, The Divide by Jason Hickel. Please do skip chapter 17 and 18 because they go into this positive money spin, which is wrong. But the rest of it is fantastic. Just a great book. And it describes the stuff down to the nth. This is not an accident. This is exactly the way it's, you know, when, when think about when we all give up our homes because we can't afford them anymore. What happens? Do you think that the capitalists, these, these vultures, are coming in there paying market value? No, they're paying basement prices to swoop it out, and then they, in turn, make another profit on top of your misery. This is the whole game. This is this is like it. This is it. Like, like don't look for another answer. This is it. The public-private partnerships, the neoliberal angle, this, this is it. And, and a government is deeply in cahoots with it. It is an ideological preference. Our role at the IMF, our role at the World Bank, our role at the WTO is all predicated on when we go to help another country that we make them absolutely get rid of any protections they have, get rid of any kind of public space and force them to privatize the whole damn country. And this is we're we're in charge of that. We are we have a veto level power at those world consortiums. And we are driving that neoliberalism. That is our number one export. I'm telling you, folks, if there's anything in the world that you want to get rid of, it's neoliberalism. And it is happening right there. That that clip literally gave me hives. Literally gave me hives listening to him talking about us working with private industry. Private industry is the ones holding on to patents, keeping Africans from having vaccines. I mean, this is this is preposterous. This is disgust. This is celebrating well, the Bill Gates of the world and the Bezos. But and Biden is too. Musk. Yeah, Biden. Well, no, that's, he's Biden took, them. Biden he's, took yeah. forever to even allow. Yes, yes. It's it's the game. It is the game. He is serving those people. I, I'm telling you right now, the balkanization of the haves and the have-nots. I mean, I don't want to get cliche. I try not to live in cliche, but this is just straight up cliche. This is literally the game, and it is literally happening in front of you. And Biden's words tell me he is a free marketeer to his bones, just like Elizabeth Warren and the rest of these fools. And, and it's not going to get better until our friends and families fight back. And I don't even know if that's enough, right? Because this is so ingrained in the world system. It's not just the U.S. We have literally exported this around the globe, this mindset, this way of doing things. And and you look in Australia, they had robust uh, social contracts with their citizens, and they're still trying to privatize in, in, in Australia. You look in the UK, they had the National Health Service, same thing. The US has been instrumental in getting our privateers in there to try and unwedge the National Health Service and start privatizing it. We do it in Canada. We do it all over. We literally export the sick mindset of privatization. And that's what you're seeing right here is the, the hat tip to the private sector. And the private sector has one goal and one goal only. That is maximize profit, period, period. Right. So that's it. That's it. You could almost like done. That, that's the story.